Good day, YouTubers. I had wanted to get out for a final snapper fishing session before the season closed, and I had booked a couple of days off work to go out on July the 1st and 2nd when the Sol Luna was great, but I had to cancel that due to work commitments. So I booked the Monday of the following weekend off with the idea of taking my wife out in the bay for an overnighter on the Sunday Monday. Looked at the weather on Saturday and the forecast was rubbish. So I cancelled the overnighter as well, only to get up Sunday morning and find the actual weather was pretty good. But I had to get out and test some things on the boat. I put a new transducer on, I'd made some modifications to the charging system on the boat, and I had a new submarine that I wanted to test, and more about that later. So I went out by myself on the Monday just to get those jobs done. Planned to do some crabbing while I was out there, and I thought in between checking the pots I might have a quick fish. So that was the plan. Getting away nice and early this morning. It is 4.59. First light isn't until about 6 o'clock, so we've got an hour to get the crab pots in and get over to somewhere to fish. That should be enough time, I hope. Get me nicely set up by the time it's first light. Or just before first light, hopefully. First drop, first fish of the day, and it's a bloody grinner. Oh. At least it's a fish, I'm on the board, bait for later. If you can see these here, one of the boys gave them to me. They're click sinkers. They seem to have got some interest there, have we? Yeah, a little bit. All right, I'll get some of these out anyway, get one of these out. I just want a really small one, because I've decided I need a little bit of weight on that other line. Just a little bit too much current here. Yeah, there's only a picker, but let's have a look, let's have a feel. Anyway, back to the story I was about to tell, and that is that I think I need a little bit more weight on this. It's just floating on the surface. And that's what these click sinkers are designed for. I'm just going to put him... Uh, how do you do this now? Haven't used these before. There's a open them somewhere, somehow. I think that's the opening. Okay, and then you click it back up, and there you go, you got a running ball sinker on there. I'll put that down. Yes, that's nice. That'll take him down. Uh, just give it a few minutes here because we've turned around a bit and I have got the fish. So we're definitely off the fish. So I'll just give it a couple of minutes, see if we get any interest and then I'll move. Oh, straight back on. Wind's picking up a bit now too. Might be wanting to find a more sheltered spot to fish soon. See what it comes up to. He couldn't have baited me so quickly, surely. But he did. Yeah, question is, where do we move to? Uh, go back and try closer in on the reef. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll have a look around the houseboat. Another spot around there. And if that doesn't work, and the wind hadn't come up too much, I might have a drift through the artificial reef. Yeah, white cat's coming up a bit now. Bloody winds are a bit cold. I don't think you mind taking the bait. Alright. Oh, don't tell me I got him. I have too. Oh, no, I didn't. He just followed it up trying to get it. Damn. He wasn't real big anyway, so no great loss. That's the high chair channel, and we're doing. 21, 21 knots near enough. I'm 
and that's a new chap sounder got really good definition in it it's on high chirp at the moment low chirps not needed here high chirp not even needed here with a one kilowatt system but nevertheless that's what i've got to test i tested it before it holds bottom to 33 knots which is as fast as a bait will go it was holding bottom really well so i think i've got it just in the right spot We've got some fish over the reef here, but I'm just going to go off the edge of the reef. I want to fish in a little bit deeper water. Just get away from these blokes a bit, and now we go out, and I'll better concentrate on finding where I'm going to fish. Some interest straight away again. Just came over to the artificial reef, having a drop there. What have we got here? A squid! Ha ha ha! Oh, live bait! Wow! Okay, did not expect that. Well, go down in there then. Oh, you have a good bite out of that. Well, I want this rig for a live squid. Get off that. Shit, shit, shit. I've bitten off before I could even get the camera on. And that was my live squid. Yep. Bloody must be a mackerel. How annoying. I better check this one and see if it's got any bait. It's been down a long time. Feels as though it has coming up. Oh, got a, got a whiting. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well. You feel big enough? Yeah, yes, you're gonna be bait. Live bait. Put you down in there for now. I've got some in this one, but again, I'll, oh, yeah, we've got some bigger ones. Some bigger. Oh, mostly the smaller ones too. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I would have got you out. This one might be big enough. <laughs> Bad luck, Jack. You've only got one claw, so I can grab you by it. Shit, you're not big enough. Three. Get this somewhere out before he... Little squire. Oh, that's all. That one's going to be too small. He's the only male left. Way too small. Yeah. Uh, what's that, about three? 
Okay, 13 in there again, and no keepers. And we got just a big Jenny in that one. Oh, well, it's not very good over here. Oh, we've got a uh, oh, one of those crabs, I can't think of what they're called. Decorator crab, that's what they are. And leather jacket. I'll get him out. you out. Yeah, and there you go. Little decorator crab. <laughs> Funny looking things they are. Right. Now, find something else for this one too. I got an ROV, which is basically a submarine drone. It's connected to the surface by a tether and takes pictures underwater. I got that courtesy of my boss, he bought it and thought he'd like to use it, but after he'd used it for a bit, he decided it wasn't really for him. So, long story short, I ended up with it, and this is my first use of it. The area marked here is the reef that comes out from Raby Bay and extends up towards Wellington Point. It's supposed to be a patchy coral reef, and because this was my first time using the ROV, I didn't want to risk it amongst the coral in case it got snagged up and it was too bloody cold to dive down and get it. So I decided I'd go just inside the reef because I've seen some interesting sonar images from that area and I wanted to see what was there. So I went to this mark, which lies just inside the reef itself. The area that I've drawn the yellow line around is roughly the area where the sonar returns show a lot of bottom structure. It's all inside the actual surveyed reef and the orange line there denotes a sandbar which is quite shallow but you can get over it if you're careful. However, the green line shows a slightly deeper area where you can go in and out quite safely. It takes a little bit of finding but if you just nose around carefully you'll work it out. And this shot here is just to make it clear whereabouts I was using the ROV in relation to the surveyed reef. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but that reef survey I think is about 10 years old, so could have changed a bit since then. This is my first time using the ROV out in the ocean, and as you can see there's a lot of sediment floating around in the water, so visibility isn't all that good to start with. I was using my phone to view the image with, and although I had the screen cranked up as bright as it would go, there was a lot of reflection around. The sunlight was getting in on the screen as much as I tried to shade it. I couldn't see the detail that was down there, so I missed a lot of what was happening as I was manoeuvring around. I only saw it once I got on the computer and started to edit the shots. I can see there's a drop off over to the right here and had I seen it when I was out on the water I would have followed that down to see what was at the bottom of it. As it was I didn't see it at all until I got back to the computer. I was also discovering that looking in the camera gave no depth perception so I had no idea exactly how far anything was away or how far I was off the bottom until I hit it and stirred up all the muck and then the only alternative was to point the nose up in the air to the sun and go up out of the muck and come back down again outside the cloud. Once I got back down outside the cloud that I'd stirred up, it didn't take very long to find the drop-off that I had been near and have a closer look at the structure of that. It looks like something, maybe an anchor chain or something, has been dragged through the sediment just there. But what I was really interested in was the appearance of the structure itself. I might be wrong, but to me this looks like it could be coffee rock covered with a layer of sediment. I didn't even see this crab standing there with his claws outstretched ready to defend himself against this intruder into his realm 
until I got it onto the computer. I had no idea he was there on the phone when I was actually out on the water. I really need to do something about the view that I've got from the ROV in real time because had I known he was there, I would have gone over for a closer look, see what he did. In places, the ocean floor here looks like it could be a scene from the moon. As I came up on this piece of structure and went over the top of it, I can see now there was a crater in the top of it, but I missed that at the time. Otherwise, I would have tipped the drone up to have a better look down inside that in case it was a tunnel going through the rock, if indeed it is coffee rock. And then I spotted this on the ocean floor. At first I thought it was a ghost pot because there weren't any floats in the area. So I thought it must have been a crab pot that had been lost. As I went up to it, you can just sort of see a flash of a fish that comes towards the drone and disappears above it. And of course I went in closer for a look to just identify exactly what it was. I was already making plans that if it was a ghost pot, what did I have on board that I might be able to grapple it out with? And could I get a rough position on it by bringing the drone straight to the surface? I know you're not supposed to touch other people's pots, but I figured that a pot without a float that you find abandoned underwater should be removed so it doesn't kill any other sea creatures. But it didn't come to that, as you'll see in a minute. Did you recognise what it is as we closed in on it? Being new to this whole business of driving an ROV in first person view through the phone, I managed to hit the bottom quite a bit and stir up a lot of muck. This was no exception, but when I closed back in on the structure, and by now I hope you recognise what it is, it's a milk crate. But anyway, what I was going to say is, as I closed back into the structure, but I found that the leather jacket that was hanging around there was still there. I hadn't frightened him away at all. And now that I've established that it's a milk crate and no hazard to marine life, I still have one question, and that is, did someone drop it overboard accidentally, or did someone put it there on purpose as their own private fish aggregating device? And as I came back to the boat, I had to have a look around at that from underwater. The Mincade coder is deployed, and as you can see, that's down a fair way and holding us in position very well. I ran down along the side of the boat, and I'll skip that part of the footage quite quickly because one part of the side of the boat's pretty much the same as any other part. Came around the end, there's the motor, and the Raymarine transducer is on the left-hand side of the motor. And on the right-hand side of the boat, you see the other transducers. Outboard is the transducer for the Cannon Downrigger. Next one in is the new Airmar transducer. And inboard of that is the Hummingbird transducer. The Hummingbird and Raymarine transducers are side imaging transducers, as well as down imaging and traditional. The Airmar is a high-low frequency chirp transducer, which I've just installed. Wanted to be able to see better down deep. And I was also looking for a transducer that would hold bottom at full speed in rough water. And that's it for the ROV footage for this trip. This one was mainly an experiment just to get a handle on using it and see what I needed to do to maybe make it better. One thing I need is a shroud for my phone so that I can see the screen a bit better. I have that or a bigger screen somehow. I'll work something out anyway because what I want to do is I want to use the drone to go down and get some pictures of the bottom when we see something on the bottom that's of interest on the sounder. I'm not sure what it is. I'll send the drone down. 
and we can compare the image on the sounder to what we see on the drone and hopefully that'll give you an idea of what to look for on the sounder for particular bottom types. Long term project but see how it goes. Couple of leather jackets and that's it. Well, I'm not impressed with that. This one's getting moved too. You might notice I've got some more of uh, Mr. Bates' new style crab pots. I feel a little bit like the guy in the Toyota ad. You know, the guy that got a bit of bird droppings on his car, I think, and then he went and got a new car. Well, maybe I'm not quite that bad. I had uh, had a shark eat the uh, bait bag out. Now, I could have put another bait container in, but the whole purpose of having a crab pot with a bait bag is to have the bait bag, so. It was a good excuse to go and get a couple more of these. I love them. They are just great. I was going to wait another half hour before I picked these pots up, but the wind's coming up. It's a good 12, 13 knots now, and sort of expecting it'll come up some more, so I'll go and pick the pots up and go in, I think. It hasn't been a stellar day, although it's been a nice time on the water. Really sorry I used the light leader when I got bitten off. On that rod, I should have been using the heavier leader. Never mind, these things happen. I've had a good time, I've proved the new transducer, it's working beautifully. And it looks like I got it positioned just perfectly too. And uh, tried out my little submarine. So it did everything I intended to do, just would have liked to caught a few crabs. A fish or two wouldn't have been bad either, but oh well, never mind. And that's it for the trip. I covered a fair bit of ground, just trying to do a little bit of fishing in between checking the crab pots. Missed out on the snapper. Even worse, I missed out on that fish that took the live squid and bit me straight off. Would love to have caught that and found out what it was. Even if it was a shark, it would have given me a good fight. But I think it was probably a mackerel. Would have been a fair sized one if it was. So that's a pity. But never mind, I got to do most of the other things that I wanted to do when I went out there. I tested the new transducer and that is just perfect. I can lock that down in position now. And I tested the ROV and that was really good too. I've got some improvements that I need to make in my technique, but it'll do what I want it to do. So I'm pretty happy with that. I did have half a mind to try some trolling around the West Peel Artificial Reef, but I sort of ran out of time for that. I wanted to test the ROV during the really flat tide so there was no current to fight and that sort of took priority. It was never going to be a good fishing day but I should have gone a little bit further into Horseshoe Bay along that reef said. I think I might have done a little bit better had I gone in further. I usually do a little bit further in. But anyway I had a show on a sounder at that point and stopped and yeah didn't pick up anything so them's the break sometimes. It was a good trip in that I got to do most of what I wanted to do, except to catch some fish. I did bring enough home for my wife to have a little bit of a feed of crab and a couple of whiting fillets, so that wasn't too bad. All in all, I'm happy with the trip. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Until next time, good fishing.